Hello, it is Tuesday, so you know what that means. Taco Tuesday over here on Prize Picks. Gonna break down the MLB slate today. We have, I think it's 16 games. Every team is gonna be playing today, and we do have a doubleheader in Cleveland and Texas. So, gonna take a look at the first inning run props. Uh, not much that stands out for today. There's some definitely good pitchers, but also even like the worst pitchers on the slate, they're really not a lot that I feel comfortable attacking uh, for the yes. But if you just take a look at the odds on DK Sportsbook, the one that stands out over under anything that's like a minus 140, hopefully, you know, a lot better than that. A minus 170 here for Detroit at Pittsburgh. Tyler, or it's going to be Tariq Skubal against uh, Jose Quintana. And these two lefties are going to be pitching in a ballpark where you're going to see a lot of righties stacked against them, but it is uh, a ballpark that suppresses right-handed power. So that's going to make it difficult for them to score. And then just taking a look at the run total right now for this game, 3.7 for the Tigers, 3.4 for the Pirates. And these two teams, they don't have the best offenses. Uh, they've been struggling this year. So I definitely think it makes sense if you want to take the under on this one. So that would be my favorite play but like this one minus 150 the odds will make it seem like it's a good one but i don't trust dakota hudson um and on the race side jeffrey springs he's been good but edmund goldschmidt arenado these guys are very good against left-handed pitchers so not one that i'm going to be picking on if you're strictly looking for value yeah but it's just not one that i'm going to recommend and then if you compare pitches thrown on other sites with what prize picks has got there's some guys that are th their totals are a little bit low on prize picks so if you want to take the over it makes sense and those are jose quintana 87.5 i've seen him at 90.5 dakota hudson 93.5 and then chris flux at 87.5 so you're getting uh three pitches pretty much uh which is pretty nice but the thing is like these three guys like i don't think you would ever be comfortable saying I trust Quintana Hudson or Flexen especially with the matchups like Flexen and Hudson not really great and then Quintana just he's he's been a good pitcher this season but still you know the, the kind of guy that he is kind of an average-ish guy throughout his career just not really something that I'm comfortable with but if you are again looking for value that's where I would go but getting actually getting into the plays that I do like we're going to be going to Cincinnati again, and I really, uh, you know, it really sucked that this game, it finished in seven innings, they gave the Reds the victory there, but yeah, I talked about Brandon Drury, he was my thumbnail, my favorite play of the day, and he homered in the first inning, but because there was rain and the risk of suspension and postponement, I barely took any of him, so that kind of sucked, but today, we're going to go right back to him. The weather should be good for this one. And he is just on a tear right now. This guy, still has 6.5 projection. They're taking on Tyler Gilbert. Uh, or is it Taylor? Tyler. Tyler Gilbert. He pitched a no-hitter um, in his career. I think it was last year. But other than that, he really hasn't been great. He's a lefty. And the two percentiles that they have, 5 percentile, 29 for the fastball velocity and spin. Just not great. Has a 6.16 expected ERA. K rate's not that great. Splits allows a ton of power to righties this year. Just he's he's really bad when it comes to the splits allowing things to righties. And it's going to be tough for him today. You know, talked about Madison Bumgarner, how he could struggle today or on Monday. Same thing for Gilbert, a lefty that just isn't that great when it comes to facing righties. And this red lineup's going to have eight of them, except Joey Votto. And Votto can hit lefties fine. So I really like Brandon Drury. I really like Tommy Pham again. If you want to take Votto as part of a stack, also at 6.5, totally makes sense. But I prefer Drury. I think he's the best play for the Reds here. Pham's going to be next for me. But yeah, Drury, quickly, his stats, a ton of red. He's just swinging at really well right now. And... You look at his splits, he's really good against lefties. So that's just another thing. And then quickly on ground ball fly ball rates. So Gilbert, ground ball fly ball, it is significant splits for him against righties. 47% for fly ball against righties. And you look at Drury, he has an under 40% ground ball rate. So he should be able to get the ball in the air. 
you know in Cincinnati, the ball's going to be flying. Some mild winds blowing out towards center. 78 degrees, a 5.5 run total. Very solid for the Reds once again. So, Dreary, just, I would say he's probably my favorite play, but because um, I had him as my favorite play last time, I'm going to give someone else also as the thumbnail. So, that's why you're not going to see Dreary as the thumbnail for this video, but I really do like Dreary at 6.5. They usually don't adjust fancy point projections, but honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if they bumped into 7.5. Um, so get him in while you can. And the next one is actually going to be an under. Cesar Hernandez at 7. This is kind of a, a tricky one, I would say, but I'm going to give the under on this one because I think someone who doesn't really have power, who doesn't really have uh, stolen base upside, it's going to be tougher for them to get there. And Cesar Hernandez, he gets there because of pretty much he gets a single or, you know, he walks. But he does walk great also. Just not really anything that great. And so you're basically relying on him to get on base with a base with a hit. And then having his guys behind him drive him in. Like, certainly Juan Soto can do that. Uh, Josh Bell. But it, it's going to be tough, I think, with Edward Cabrera on the mound. This is someone who has a lot of potential. And for his start, for her first start um, this season, it was in cores and he was lights out. Six innings, one hit, no earned, four walks, but nine strikeouts. The Nationals don't strike out a ton, so that's why I'm not taking Cabrera's strikeout prop at 4.5. I know a lot of people are going to like that one, but I think I'd just rather take an under on Cesar Hernandez. Like, a 3.7 run total, so Vegas does believe in the talent of Cabrera. And, you know, you look at Cesar Hernandez, 33 percentile in walks. He basically has no power. He has zero homers on the year. And his game log, like, he doesn't walk a lot. He doesn't steal bases. He has no home runs. So you're relying on him to either come with the bat with guys on base, which is going to be hard when he's hitting first. He's going to rely on bombing the guys to do that. And, like, you know, you're going to hope that Soto or Cruz comes up the plate with him on base. I think it's kind of high. Should probably be like 6 or 6.5. So that's why I'm going to take the under for Cesar Hernandez. And then on to hits and walks. There is one, and that is Byron Buxton taking the under on 1.5. And they are taking on the Yankees here, uh, Twins at home, Jameson Tyon. Jameson Tyon does not walk hitters. Byron Buxton, he doesn't really walk that at a high rate either. So you're basically looking for Buxton to get two hits, pretty much. Tyon, looking at his numbers, look at that walk rate. 99 percentile, 2.2, top 1% of the league. And he's just been a very solid pitcher. Splits, kind of reverse. But Buxton, he is not reverse. He's traditional. So he's going to most likely struggle against righties. And I know I've been basically taking the overs for Buxton whenever we have the opportunity, but this is not the opportunity to do that. This is an opportunity to take the under. Buxton struggles against righties, and I would expect him to be better as the season goes on, but he's hitting 206. He's facing off against a good pitcher. It's in Minnesota, not Yankee Stadium, so it's a lot better of a pitcher's ballpark, and you just look at Buxton, his numbers, his walks are extremely low. He barely has multi-hit games. Like He had one here, three, but 0 one, one, zero, all the way back until May 3rd was his two-hit game. Sure, he, you know, he walked twice here and here, but walks, they're really scarce. So that's why I'm taking the under Yankees. Their bullpen's pretty solid as well. So I think this is an, this is an under that definitely makes a lot of sense. Um, and then there's one that I'm kind of also leaning towards. It's just Jazz Chisholm over Joan Adon. He walks a ton of guys. I'm not too confident in this one because Chisholm doesn't walk at a high enough rate, but if you want, you can take his fantasy point prop at 7.5. He has stolen base upside, so you can get there that way. Marlins have a healthy five-run total, but I want to definitely revisit that later. Maybe I'll add it to the plays when I tweet it, but something that I'm keeping an eye on, definitely. Going on to runs and RBIs, there are two, both of them. I'm thinking of locking them. The thumbnail for this video is going to be Christopher Morel. 0.5 against Kyle Bradish. Bradish, I basically attack every time. You can attack him either way, but he is a reverse splits guy. He's not good against lefties either, but you know, you look at his numbers 
and then compare them to Christopher Morel's. Morel's reverse splits guy. So it matches up. Morel's the leadoff hitter. And ever since he's been up the league, he is scoring close to a run every game. And you're also getting RBIs. So here's Morel, batting average, 291 right now, 275 expected. Um, K rate, kind of league average, but he's a he's a high walk guy, 12%. And then reverse splits, 306 against righties. Game logs, you'll get the run column, 100111, all of these numbers. Looking really solid. And then also you get RBIs with the prize picks category. So I really like that. And Bradish, a ton of blue. Expected area of 5.57, 7.6 walk rate. Uh, so yeah, you know, someone that doesn't really go deep. Baltimore, not the best bullpen either. 4.6 run total. Wind's pulling out 11 miles per hour towards the outfield, kind of towards the left center. So I really like Morel. He's been on fire. He has speed. So I like him. And then the other lock, it's going to be DJ LeMahieu. You know, if I have the opportunity to take LeMahieu hitting, leading off for the Yankees, they're one of the better offensive teams in the league. Even on away, they're still very good. And they're taking on, um, I think it's Cole Sands. He goes by Cole, but on here it says Bryson. And this guy, he's a young guy. He's probably not going to be that great. Sure, I like it if um, this game was in Yankee Stadium, but you know the matchup, it's certainly pretty solid. And LeMahieu, as long as he's in the lineup, bounty leadoff, going to really like it when Judge is hitting behind him. He's on fire. They got Stanton back in the lineup. Healthy Rizzo there, walking and everything, getting on base. So really like LeMahieu. So those are going to be the guys. But another guy I'm keeping an eye on is Trevor Story, waiting for when they uh, announce the lineup. They're taking on Reed Detmers. So if... He's able to bat higher than fifth because they did send down um, Duran, Jaren Duran. So maybe they shake things up. You know, they bat. The probably most logical thing is they bat Kike first again. But who knows? Story's been playing a lot better as of late. But those are going to be the plays. And I actually one more thing about the doubleheader. Game two, they have um, Connor Pilkington pitching for the Guardians. And I'm kind of interested in Marcus Semyon, Mitch Garver because of the platoon advantage. Semi isn't playing better of late. He has speed and Garver really good against lefties. But, you know, the Ks always worry me, worry me. But we're going to have to wait because this is a doubleheader. So we don't know if they're going to be in the lineup again. But, again, favorite plays, though, it's going to be Brandon Drury, Chris Morrell, and DJ Mayhew. So Taco Tuesday, you can pair any of these picks with those. I'm going to actually write an article breaking these plays down in depth. Totally free. I'm going to post that down below in the comments pin it in this video when I get done. So thank you guys for watching. Good luck on Tuesday and I'll see you in the next video.